न्यूजीलैंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज रूल्ड दैट नॉट अलाउिंग 16 एंड 17 ईयर ओल्ड्स टू वोट अमाउंट्स टू एज डिस्क्रिमिनेशन विल द नेशनल वोटिंग एज बी लोअर नाउ फ्रॉम 18 टू 16 Well the country's prime minister just in the Arden says she personally favors lowering the minimum voting age but such a landmark change would require a super majority which means at least 75% of the lawmakers need to agree to lower the age and even proponents acknowledging that they don't have the numbers I personally support a decrease in the voting age but it is not a matter simply for me or even the government any change in electoral law of this nature requires 75% of parliamentarian support that's why it's our view that this is an issue best placed to parliament for everyone to have their say Now this ruling came after New Zealand's top court found that the current voting age was inconsistent with the country's bill of rights inconsistent with the country's bill of rights Now this bill gives people the right to be free from age discrimination once they are 16 years old and it is a landmark victory for the Make It 16 campaign which was created after school strikes in 2019 over climate action The minimum age for voting is already 16 in some countries this includes Argentina Australia Brazil Cuba Scotland Wales Ecuador Malta and Nicaragua are also on that list But what does this change really entail and are the youth really ready to take on such a responsibility Let's just understand this the arguments for lowering the voting age generally ro- revolving around comparisons with non electoral rights and the issue of majority now many say that a good proportion of teenagers have the same responsibilities as adults but are denied the same rights and stopping 16 year olds from voting seems unjustified when they can drive they can work full time and even pay taxes another reason is this young people are expected to follow the law but they have no say when it comes to how the laws are made many believe that the youth should have a say when it comes to long term democratic decisions as they will have to live with the consequences additionally lowering the eligibility age can increase the voter turnout and account for more responsible voting that is because people under 18 years tend to have stronger roots in their community and they often live in the same area for many years and are more aware of the local issues and that's not all young people who vote can also influence the voter turnout of their parents in fact a study shows that parents who have children participating in a program were more likely to vote in the actual election on the other hand what do the critics say they find 16 year olds too young to cast ballots they say voting requires a high level of civic responsibility and knowledge which is not synonymous with protesting or voicing opinions many also arguing that most teenagers don't have a basic understanding of how the government works however in recent years international campaigns to lower voting ages have been on the rise and new zealand is not the first country to propose such a change nearly half of all the american states have seen legislative attempts to lower the voting age in just the last two decades Four towns in Maryland have successfully lowered their voting age to 16 and many more are looking at following that lead. Yeah. And with me on the broadcast this minute is Manuel Delia who is a journalist and political commentator with me from Malta. Thanks very much for being here. Now Malta granted 16 year olds uh, the right to vote in 2018. Tell us more about why that change was made, what was the reason and uh, what are the arguments in favor of lowering the age according to you? Look, the uh, change to 16-year-old voting in Malta was not a popular campaign, nor was it a protest campaign that persuaded change, like is happening in New Zealand. It was a government initiative, uh, an initiative of the ruling party, 
and uh, the opposition party found itself in a place where it was too awkward to say no to it because uh, the ruling party would have put it in, in any way and the opposition would have been telling 16 year olds we didn't want you to be able to vote and i think this wasn't about in malta's case an expansion of democracy i think ultimately uh, the government calculated probably rightly uh, that many 16 year olds in this tribal culture that we live in would be voting uh, in the same way that their parents did and this would be consolidating uh, government's uh, already strong majority and perpetuating it for Right. We'll just try, uh, try and reconnect that line uh, with our guest, Manuel Delia, who was telling us more about Malta's journey when it comes to lowering the voting age. That change was witnessed in the country in 2018. Um, we lost you there for a bit, Manuel. Go ahead. OK, I'm very sorry. So the arguments um, to oppose the opposition, as it were, uh, were, listen, um, people say that people are not ready at 16 uh, to vote because they do not have the civic knowledge yet, but they're ready at 18. But in reality, there's not much difference between age 16 and age 18. There's no appreciable growth. Um, my 12-year-old daughter, I would trust her with a vote because I know her opinions are informed and she follows the news and she thinks about them. And I know many people my age, age 46, that should in, in, in reality not be allowed to vote because they have no idea what they're voting for and they don't really care. At 16, however, in places where there is campaigning to allow people to vote at that age, there is increasingly an awareness of issues that older voters are still not responsible enough for. And this fundamentally is about climate change, that it is uh, that, that promotes policies uh, that are necessary not to change things now, but to make the world livable after we, the adults, the grown-ups, the 40-plus-year-olds, have left this planet. Right. Uh, so that is another argument. Right. The immediate question that arises then in this debate when it comes to lowering the minimum voting age is where does one draw the line? How young is too young to vote? What is the uh, reasoning behind choosing uh, 16 and not 15 or even 14? Clearly, um, it, it is a fair question and it's a question that's been asked since suffrage has been extended. Um, you could vote uh, for the Senate in France uh, in the late, in the early uh, 19th century, if you were 40, and you weren't competent if you were younger. And that has changed over time, and now there is universal consensus that 18 is a good enough age. But as you said in your introduction, if we allow 16-year-olds to take a very important social decision, which is the decision to marry and raise children, if they're competent to make that choice, how can one argue that they're not competent to choose who should run the country. We do not allow in many countries people to make that choice, the choice of marrying at age 14. So right. at some point we do draw the line. All right, Manuel, we're leaving it there for the moment. Thanks very much for joining us and helping Thank us you. better understand what Malta's journey has looked like. Remains to be seen where things are headed for New Zealand. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.